Live from New York, it's The Cube, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now your host, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in New York City for Hadoop World, Strata Hadoop, Strata Conference, Big Data NYC, it's all happening here. We are on the ground 100 yards from the Javits Center right up West 37th Street, big studio, kind of like the Today Show, this is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, George Gilbert, our Big Data Analyst at Wikibon.org, and our next guest is CUBE alum, David Richards, the founder and CEO of WinDisco. Great to see you, welcome back. Always great to be here, and what a fantastic space you guys have got, it's phenomenal. Well, I love having you on one because you're the CEO of a public company in the space for many years, but you're also kind of like a guest analyst. We get to get the perspective from you. So, you know, the theme this year that we're hearing on theCUBE is beyond Hadoop, get real Hadoop, beyond Hadoop, Hadoop is invisible, it's turning into Spark World, a lot of hype there. So, the bottom line is that there are people who want to write big checks in the enterprise to bring the infrastructure mm -hmm. to the next level. And that means it's got to be real. And, and the reality is, you can have a valuable solution that you get paid for, and that's going to differentiate a lot of people. You've been doing business successfully. What's your take on that? Do you believe in that statement? And then what are some of the things that you're hearing relative to what's re making Hadoop real? So that's a very big question and warrants an answer of at least 30 minutes, but I'll try and keep it to, <laughs> to about five. That's, so first of all, the evolution of the Hadoop marketplace is, in, is really fascinating. We're at a really interesting inflection point right now. Firstly, I'd say that Silicon Valley is this humongous vacuum chamber, where, echo chamber, where we, we want to believe that you know, suddenly Hadoop is so old and now we're on to the next thing, Spark, and then we're on to the next thing, which is in memory compute, then we're on to the next thing. And that isn't the way that markets really work. We're only now seeing the first green shoots of companies going into full-blown production environments with Apache Hadoop. And it's interesting, I mean, Mike Olson 12 months ago said, Hadoop will disappear. And I think in, in a way he's right, and by that, if I go and ask the average CIO of any of the large businesses that are deploying Hadoop right now, which Hadoop distribution are you using? Nobody knows. Because they might be using a cloud, a, an Oracle big data appliance, we're doing a lot of deals with Oracle right now. They may be using a Teradata appliance. That, and these are OEMs of various and sundry Hadoop distributions. I think the marketplace is moving from basically lab work, and in a lab, and this is to your point, John, there are no SLAs, there are no service level agreements in an, in an enterprise. The first question I ask to any company deploying Hadoop is, what's your SLA? Is it less than two hours? If it's not, that is not a real production mission critical application. If there is, then it is. I, mean, I would and that's say it could be less than, less than 20 minutes. I mean, exactly. the numbers only get smaller. It's a huge window, two hours? Ex well, exactly. And you, believe it or not, a lot of the applications, when we say companies are in production with Hadoop, a lot of those applications are batch based, where an outage really doesn't matter. They're not using mission critical data, so security isn't that important. But the market's moving and evolving. And I think this, that as, as we move beyond these lab projects, as companies come out of a lab, I think the market reverts to type. And by type, I mean you're going to see the usual suspects dominate the marketplace. It's going to be Oracle, IBM, EMC, Teradata, Cisco, Microsoft. They're the companies that are going to absolutely dominate enterprise deployments. But there is a real battle royale going on right now. We saw announcements from, from the Google Cloud, which is Spark on Hadoop. Uh, uh, I think it was one cent for an hour. We've got IBM launching apparently exactly the same thing. We've got a, all the cloud vendors are trying to bring those services to market. That's fascinating. So let's talk about what you guys announced. WAN Disco Fusion yeah. partnership with EMC. Mm -hmm. I see they're big here. Um, and this world also is kind of, if you look at the, what Hadoop was seven years ago, when we first started covering it six years ago with theCUBE, it was no startups. EMC, Greenplum was the first kind of entry in. Mm -hmm. And then now, Oracle, EMC, the whales are all here, that if you right? So how does someone become a unicorn when the megacorns are coming in? So that's a great question, and I think Wandisco is ideally positioned for this move. I'm, I'm bound to say that, of course. But let's just, let's just think about what's actually happening. Hadoop is going into enterprise. 
the companies taking it there are not the are not the startup tech businesses. It's as you put it, the whales, the enormous businesses, the IBMs, the EMCs, and so on. We announced the partnership with EMC today. Most of our production deals, as I go down both pipeline and deals close to date, ninety percent, you know, are with the whales. So how do you become a un how do you become a unicorn in that environment? You provide a piece of technology that is so specifically unique that they can't do it themselves. Now, Wanscope Active Active Replication for business continuity is what we do. And we're performing very, very well as this marketplace matures from a lab when it's just all the propeller heads saying, I'm going to build a nice application that's, that's a might need, not a must have, into production, that's where One Disco comes to life. So let's just take that as an example. So I'm just going to use a metaphor, it may or may not be accurate. Data domain had a niche concept called backup and recovery. Yeah. They nailed it so hard, no one could replicate them. But yet, you know, EMC paid billions of dollars yeah. for it, but then obviously a bidding war. Um, you know, Franco Tron was involved in that deal too. We were just <laughs> talking about the, you know, the banking side, which we'll get to in a second. I want to talk about the M&A activity. But that was something that no one could replicate. Data domain really kicked some butt there, and then EMC obviously paid up for it, but not saying that you'll get bought, but yeah. potentially. Is that what you're saying, that WAN Disco has some core competency and some inimitability? <laughs> I, or would, I was with... Because everyone's going to say, well, if they're so good, then why not just copy that? So, first of all, we own patents. We've got three granted and seven filed in one of the most complicated, difficult problems in computer science. Active, active, one scope replication. I know it's a big <laughs> mouthful. I know it, people's eyes... Jagain like, would love to talk about it for an hour. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> but it's a hard problem. And I'll, I'll quote a CIO, uh, Wall Street CIO that I met with um, on Monday, who said... I hope you guys don't get bought. And I said, we're a public company, we don't need to get bought, we've got access to capital markets and so on. He said, because what you're doing, you're in a category of one. Nobody else can do this. As companies go into production, business continuity becomes an absolute critical component of that. And that's what we do. Well, I mean, I would argue a tender offer would get your attention, <laughs> or some sort of, you know, your, your category one, a number will always get your attention. But let's talk about the M&A market, not necessarily for when Disco. Mm -hmm. Because what you have here in this marketplace, as Dave Vellante was saying yesterday, is you have words like profitless um, with prospect. Yeah. Meaning that means that's the development market, meaning I'm a startup, I'm going to maybe raise a bunch of venture capital or private equity, I spend $2 to get, to get a $1 in sale, that's not a sustainable model, yeah. but I'm going to take down market position and grow from there and, and have a valuable product. Or I have a valuable product and I sell, I get paid, or I don't, or I have a valuable product and I go out of business. So in that scenario, there's growth capital tuck under yep. deals, and there's also accu hires. Yep. So I want you to comment on the landscape because we will see some dying unicorns as across the entire landscape of mm -hmm. tech. You're going to see growth startups just become the next brand name, and then you're going to see great product, no market. That's a great question. So the way I look at the marketplace is the, the, the private equity funded businesses are just out of control on valuations. I mean, we're seeing, you know, for companies with less than, less than $100 million of revenue, $4 billion valuations on what might happen. And I think there's two factors there. Undoubtedly, this highly disruptive marketplace called big data that's really driven by cost, and George, you, you've got a great uh, slide that used to show data storage going at 60%, uh, IT budgets going at 5%. That means that the marketplace is being disrupted by cost, and cost, not technology. So. Um, I think those businesses are, are benefiting from that, and secondarily, they're benefiting from a PE bubble. With interest rates at zero, I mean, let's face it, where else can money go? Money's like a heat-seeking missile for opportunity, and one of the places it's going is into small private companies where you know, you don't, they don't have to disclose revenue numbers, and often you know, when they do file IPOs, there's a big surprise as to that their revenues are half or a third of what we all thought they were. And I think that's, I think good luck to them because we are creating unicorns. How real are some of them? I mean, come on. I mean, you can't get, you know, multi-billion dollar valuations on, uh, you, you know, in, in relatively insignificant revenue. The other market, the M&A marketplace is interesting. There are, this inflection point, this idea that we are going from essentially a lab project into production changes the market because if you look at the average deal sizes. In, in what way? Because the average, the, the first thing that changes is the average deal sizes grows from a sort of $30,000 product sale, which, is, we, we, which we know because we can see some of the, some, there is some visibility into this invisible market now. 
versus our companies like us. I mean, what's our average deal size? Three, four, Those five are hundred. This quarter, our average deal size, I think, will be half a million bucks. That's clear indication that the market is going into production. And I think- That's some good metadata so you're sharing. Appreciate that, but I want to go back. The $30,000 deals, those, are those POCs, average POCs, well, or the, so, the, so the theory there is land and expand, right? So you go into a business, and they, they're taking it into, into a lab environment. You land the deal, and they pay you for some services, for some training, for some education, and for a little bit of product. When those deals want to go into production, the theory is that they'll use you to go into production. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that that is the case because I think the whales, as, as you put it, John, are going to be those companies that take them into production. And Merv Adrian, um, I was, was talking to on the way here, has that exact, exact thought. So you try it, you put it into a lab with the techie, with a lot of the technology. It's called businesses. vendor hopping, party hopping. Correct. Yeah. It's, like, it's just it's just the same thing. And. I want to be part of that second move in the marketplace, which is where all the money is. So we were speculating, I want to get your thoughts on this, this may not relate to Wayne Disco, or you might have some visibility on it. Dave and I were talking yesterday, he asked me directly, how does Cloudera become the unicorn, not a dead unicorn? I go, well, they're already technically a unicorn on paper at a $4 billion valuation. Mm -hmm. Pure storage got a down round on their IPO filing, so if they go IPO, they may even have to get that valuation. But I said, given the kind of stagnant growth of Impala, or this concept of the data hub, with SQL going <coughs> on Hadoop, driving the, the lingua franca, that kind of puts a stall on that. So how does Cloudera become a billion dollar revenue company? They got to own analytics. To me, they, so, so how do you do that? Co-op Spark. So I just was thinking in my head, what is that move? There's a lot of competition And in oh, Spark. by the way, who's coming into Spark? IBM. HP, Google. Oracle, Google, Microsoft. Every, this Microsoft. Is a, I, yeah, you, you see, that you, you, that's a great point. Um, it's a difficult conundrum, right? Because if the marketplace moves to type, which I think it probably will, where it, and, it, and I, I, remember I sat down with a, with a government CIO a couple of weeks ago and I, I gave him my whole product adoption lifecycle talk about and how the market will move back to Oracle and Google and all these companies. And he said, oh, you've really upset me because I was really hoping that the market would be made by these really small new unicorn kind of companies. And, but actually, I, I, I don't think it will. I think that this is an evolution of cost in the data center driven by the major vendors and nothing will change. But okay, you said two things there that um, could be in conflict, which is the major vendors have a price umbrella um, that they're trying to preserve, you yeah. know, like Oracle with uh, endless price, $300,000 $300, per processor core mm -hmm. for the you know, uh, 12, 12G database, mm -hmm. or 12C. Um, but sort of in the open source infrastructure land, you know, we've got this slow motion price collapse. Um, they're helping to bring down costs for others, but if customers, big customers <coughs> don't want to deal as much with small vendors, so what happens to the pricing if it's the big guys who are going to bring the enterprises into production? So there are, the, there are two forces at play in the marketplace. One which is that the cost, uh, um, pricing pressure on those companies, traditional technologies caused by open source and Hadoop. Yeah. But the second pressure that you cannot ignore is this idea of cloud and running Spark on, and you know, the, the, the point of Spark is that I can run the same compute with a third of the amount of hardware which brings cloud into play. And you can, John, you made a great point. All of the big vendors are placing ginormous bets on that happening. So, two th so it's two things. Even if it's the big companies who traditionally have a higher, higher price point and price umbrella, open source software is pressuring it and metered, press, metered pricing Correct. is pressuring it. Correct. That's bringing everyone's level down. Yep. It may not be down to the level of one of the Hadoop vendors, yep. the, the independent vendors. But that, you see, I mean, I was talking to an investor, very big investor, who said, you know, how much pricing power is there from those early vendors in the marketplace around Hadoop. I don't, think, I don't think they've got very much pricing power. And I think that's a concern, because is that a race to the bottom? Well, the value is shifted. No, it's a race to the bottom for sure. We're seeing Hadoop commoditized significantly. Yeah. That's Mike Olson's invisible, well, my comment, invisible, he said kind of going away. What he was trying to say was, and he reiterated this year, funny he brought it back up again, probably had took a lot of heat for that, but what he was saying was it was not irrelevant. What he was saying is, Hadoop is going to be abstracted away, Correct. and the value yeah. creation is going to be around it. That's analytics. Yep. That's where we're seeing Amazon crushing it with Redshift. Yep. I mean, they've just decimated the price value point 
for data warehousing. So this is going to be the new normal in every category. So analytics is going to be embedded everywhere and it's got to be run with critical infrastructure underneath. So with that being said, what does that mean for a CIO or a CXO who's out there saying, hey, go to the Strata Hadoop world, 13,000 people have come there this year. Because they're all trying to figure out what do I write the check for? So how do you break that down for a CIO? Okay then, so when I go and talk to CIOs, I say, okay, you need, to, you need to be looking at two big trends. One which is you undoubtedly have to reduce the cost of storage across the enterprise because it's the fundamental source of competition in every single industry. I was talking to a big insurer uh, yesterday, uh, Monday, sorry, who was talking about, you know, suddenly their business model they believe is going to be disrupted. They're retraining all of the actuarials to be data scientists. So the most important thing for them is to get their data now quickly into, into storage, into commodity storage, and then start you know, running these algorithms, retraining their staff. The second thing that they think they're going to do in three years, I'm going to use this, the same example, is they think because of, because of significant cost benefit, they're going to move to a cloud-based infrastructure. So really, Hadoop behind the firewall, possibly running Spark on top, is a stepping stone really to get to the promised land of cloud and I'm going to reduce my data center costs down to you know, virtually zero. That's what they're all trying to do. Okay, would it be Fred. fair to say that um, Hadoop, originally they were all sort of, you, you were able to second source with different distros for the most part, but now we're seeing not just at the management, security, governance layer, but even core processing, we're seeing differentiation. But more important, it's Spark as a sort of processing um, center of gravity is hollowing them out so that they're, they have this very limited set of mm -hmm. almost proprietary value add, but that's you know, open source. So there's, there's less room. There's less room for them to establish you know, a higher, uh, uh, to maintain a price point. Yeah. And, and so I guess moving, moving that framework, that whole framework to the cloud is, um, it's going to be uh, sort of intense price pressure. Correct. It is, a, it's, what is happening right now, we are going to see the equivalent of browser wars in cloud wars. There is going to be every single major vendor, all seven, are going to have uh, Spark running on Hadoop. They're already doing it. And that's really where the pricing pressure is going to come from because every CIO is going to say, well, if I can, if I can buy this for one cent per hour from, from Google with their new products, I mean, <laughs> where does it go? I mean, you could, I mean, that's the lowest coin denomination that you can get <laughs> to, right, for an hour's use right. of their storage. Incredible, absolutely incredible. All right, so final worry, bumper sticker for this event. If you had to look back at the, this year's event, we still got another day to go. What's your take so far? What's the, what's the aroma of the vibe, core messaging? Is it consistent what we were talking about? Any other insights and color you could share? Hadoop's, get, Hadoop's getting serious, and when it gets serious, it means money. When it means money, the whales arrive. And if you, go, if you walk around the floor, who's got the biggest booths? It's the whales. Who's got, <laughs> who's got more people hunting out these deals? It's the whales. The whales are here. There be whales out there. It's whale season here in the Hadoop ecosystem. Obviously, Amazon uh, Web Services event is next week. There's going to be a lot of whales there. You start to see everyone showing up. Cloud is powering analytics. It's the perfect storm, um, but you've got to have stuff under the hood. You guys are doing great. Wan Disco, uh, doing the hard stuff. So you, no one else has to, right? Exactly. <laughs> David Rich, it's great to have you on. Thanks for your perspective um, as CEO of uh, Wayne Disco and also kind of as our guest analyst. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. More live coverage in New York City after this short break. <laughs>